Hey everyone, welcome to the Weekly Wednesday Update. I am Chuck Mayer. It is almost the end of summer, but what it is also almost the end of is our 125 gallon tank giveaway. The biggest tank we've ever given away for free in fishy business history. We are giving, that rhymed. We're giving away at the end of this month. There are 12 days left to enter the competition. All you need to do is like us on Facebook, go to uh, YouTube and subscribe to Fishy Business SC. Then go to our website at fishybusinesssc.com. There are three different ways to enter uh, to possibly win. We wish everybody luck. 12 days left, that's it. So the next time I do this video, we'll be down to like four days left. So there's very little time left. We hope everybody wins. Let's go see what came in this week. We always try to let you guys know, or I have promised that I would always let you guys know when we have used tanks in, they're incredibly good deals. This one right behind me is one of those. Uh, it is a 55 gallon tank, stand and canopy, uh, full wet dry UV filter, uh, protein skimmer, LED light, everything. It's 400 bucks. So I'm just letting you know it is on Facebook. So hopefully by the time you see this, it won't still be gone. But if you're looking for a quick, easy way into salt water and this matches your home decor, come check it out. It'll go fast. Also wanted to let you know that we had just done a uh, special video on the new Apex system and the Trident system uh, with Michael Bartley. That will be airing on Saturday, I think probably about midday. So that if you, if you wanna know something cool about a computer system for your fish tank, especially you saltwater gurus out there. Uh, Michael has an introductory coming this way this weekend, so just wanted to throw that out there. Now let's go look at some other things. One of the new tanks that came in uh, in the last week was this new Sephora. It's a really, really cool four foot by two foot by 12 inches tall aquarium. You can, you can use it a couple of different ways. A lot of people like to use them as frag tanks because it's very easy to look at your coral frags. But in all honesty, it'd make a really cool planted tank as well, simply because you would be able to approach it from both the front and the top almost as if it's like one of these little island aquariums that are so expensive that you see. It does have a two-way viewability that the average aquarium doesn't because of how it sits on the stand. So it's a very, very cool, different type of tank. I like to think of these as lagoon type tanks uh, because it does offer all the different viewability throughout the whole thing. So a very cool tank that we don't typically stock that we have in stock right now. Hey, one of the coolest things that happens on Wednesdays is Kara gets fish. And Kara's been known to get really cool fish, and we're going to look at a few of them now. The Rainbow Gobi. Uh, don't typically have these at all, and usually when we have them, they're much smaller than this. Uh, this is a really cool example of a really cool bottom-dwelling freshwater fish. It's great in a community tank. Uh, bottom feeder, cool and different, almost eel-like, but it is in fact a Gobi. I'll let it speak for itself. Oh, it actually tried to speak. This is the Tiger Shovel Nose Red Tail Hybrid. That's a lot of words for a fish, but as you can see, it's a very cool fish. Actually has almost a leopard print on it, even right on the whiskers are divided with lines. So very, very cool. I would not put this in a tank with fish that are small as it has a very large mouth, but in any kind of semi-aggressive to aggressive tank where fish have got some size on them, he would be a great bottom feeder or accent piece to that aquarium. Okay, what we're looking at now are the Hebrosus Pygmy Cory Cats. These are pygmies in the truest sense of the word. These are tiny, tiny little Cory Cats. As difficult as Cory's have been to get lately, it is really cool to get something that is, while not rare, very, very cool on a small scale. These Cory's will fit in just about any kind of aquarium where the fish with them are small as well. Uh, they will actually school. They are a schooling Cory Cat, which is not normal either. Uh, they're not even somewhat schooling right now, but they're in a new environment. We just got them this morning. Very, very cool fish to have uh, if you love quarries or you have a small tank where you need a small little fish to clean the bottom. These are perfect. This week, Kara's gotten every color of the rainbow and the whole rainbow when it comes to uh, the dwarf neocardian shrimp. Uh, these are really, really cool. I can't say enough about them. I know I talk about them probably too much from week to week, but I'm still fascinated having done this so long that this is still a relatively new thing to have in stock. These are very, very cool shrimp. 
uh, and just the colors are just so cool. So you can have so many different types of colors in one small environment. Check them out. Okay, so what you're looking at now are green and gold quarries. Uh, they're back in stock and a very cool quarry cat to have in stock. We've also got the green fire tetras, which are a great schooling fish. Uh, absolutely phenomenal if you've got a community tank and something different that we don't typically have. Definitely pay attention to the green fire tetras when you come in this week if you've got a community tank. And if you need something for the bottom, the green and gold quarries are for you. I always like to show rare and exotic fish when we get them. And while this guy does not play well with others, this is the red tiger motoguince. This is a fish that I don't know that I have ever seen in here before. I'm sure we've seen it. This would definitely top one of Richard Bullard's rare and unusual but beautiful list. Uh, it's a fantastic fish in terms of its color and its presence. In any other market, this is a $250 fish. Uh, we've got it for a fraction of that right now. If you're into collecting South American, C Central American cichlids, this is definitely one that should be on your list. What you're looking at right now is one of the most personable flower horn cichlids we have. While flower horns as well don't play nice with others, this is a really, really cool fish. It is, a, it is gonna grow up to be absolutely beautiful. You can just tell by the markings that it has right now. And while it's cowering from the camera, it, the second we pull the camera off, this fish is out front following you around. A great, great fish if you have the spot for it. Okay, so we're looking at one of my favorite fish to start a community freshwater tank with. Uh, Mr. Bulletproof, I call them. They are the red serpe tetras. Typically when we get them in, they're a lot more washed out. This week they're just, they're, they've got this bold and red color. They look phenomenal. Uh, they look very healthy. They've got good weight. This is, this is just, in my opinion, a staple of any community freshwater tank. Probably some of the smallest Praycox rainbows I think I've ever seen. These guys don't even have their blue and red color yet, but I've got them in stock this week. If you've got a planted tank, if you're trying to establish a really cool colony of rainbows, and that to me defines a planted tank, this is a, this is a great fish to, to do for that because it's very, very small. It's a great fish, lots of color, and very hardy to boot. So this will go in a community tank, it will go in a semi-aggressive tank as they get big, uh, but they definitely hold their own and they're some of the most colorful rainbows there are. We sell out of them every week and last week was no different, but I've got them back in stock. They look healthy and they're at a great size. This is the, this is the incomparable clown loach. The clown loach is probably one of the most colorful freshwater fish that will go in a diverse amount of different types of freshwater tanks. Uh, it is a great bottom feeder. They get fairly large, but grow fairly slowly. Uh, it is uh, inexpensive for the color that they give. It's not very aggressive. And again, will go in just about any community tank where they have a little bit of room to run. The clown loach is probably one of the staple must-haves of all freshwater aquariums, and we got them. Gorgeous, gorgeous array of uh, assorted peacocks came in this week. For, for very, very young fish, they have a beautiful, beautiful amount of color. Uh, it's been probably a month or two since we've had young peacocks that already had this much color on them. There are, there are a good many of them in right now, and I'll just let the color speak for itself. All right, so I'm a little early with salt water. Uh, the majority of the salt water is coming in a little bit later. We got what I would call about a half shipment, and I'm gonna go through that real quick. But if salt water seems a little short this week, it's not that it is, it's just that the rest of it's about three hours from getting here. So Gracie will get those, she'll get them out tonight, and then you're gonna wanna watch Facebook for the pictures and the updates of what came in over and above what I'm gonna talk about. So let's get into talking about what did come in and pay attention to Facebook for what didn't. Super beautiful wrasse that came in is the Radiant Wrasse. I can't always get these from week to week and I got two of them this week. It is a beautiful uh, yellow, looks just like a yellow chorus wrasse where someone actually took a uh, deep, deep red and basically painted all through it, almost like a crimson body. It's really beautiful contrast of colors. Uh, nature is just absolutely amazing, and this is one of the things that's amazing about it. A lot of you out there have nano tanks or bio cubes, small tanks where you need small fish. 
Well, one of the stars of that show is the African Flameback Angel. It is a pygmy angel. Pygmy simply meaning that it is not going to get very big at all, not even the size of a coral beauty at full growth. It is beautiful. They are very hardy and long-lived. In my opinion, all the all ones that I've had in service have done really, really well. They typically come in eating, as you can see this little guy picking off the algae on the side of the tank. Uh, this is a great, great fish. Very peaceful, very harmonious with its tank mates as long as you give it uh, very relaxed and comfortable tank mates. We always get asked, hey, when are you going to get in yellow clown gobies? Well, here's one right here. Hopefully it'll stay out long enough for me to get some, some footage of it. Uh, even smaller than the flameback angel is the clown pygmy goby. Uh, this is a great fish also for nano tanks as it will not get very big. It hops around kind of like a hawkfish does. Uh, it has a very cute little baby face, if you will, and uh, it's a great fish for a small tank. One of the coolest crabs we get in are the arrow crabs. This thing looks like it landed from outer space into your aquarium. They have, they're just amazing to look at. They're a conversation piece in and of themselves and a reason enough to keep a saltwater aquarium. Normally we've been getting these very large and it's cool to actually have some small ones that aren't that big yet. One of the key traits of the arrow crab is they like to eat bristle worms. And bristle worms are found in almost every type of saltwater aquarium. And these are great for removing them. I wouldn't say that they will eradicate them by any means, but they are a great foraging crab that doesn't put any aggression towards anybody else. Really, really cool crab for a really cool tank. Yet another fish for the nano aquarium or any kind of small aquarium is the neon goby. At first, it doesn't seem like very much. Here's this little pinstriped blue, pinstriped black fish that doesn't seem to do very much. But I will tell you, if you put a couple of these in a tank, over time, they really do grow on you, mainly because they live, they're very hardy. They allow you to put more fish in a smaller aquarium because their size doesn't make it such that you're overpopulating a tank. And they're just a great, spot of blue here and there that doesn't put any aggression toward anything else. Uh, neon gobies are great. I can't always get them and when I do they typically go fast. Uh, great little fish. One of the coolest blennies we get and they come and go pretty fast is the starry blenny. Almost like he's got two little devil horns on his head. A great little fish as you can see he's trying to work on algae that doesn't exist on this particular rock but they're great for eating algae. They run all on the tanks uh, eating as they go. While this would never, I would never sell you this for removal of air algae in and of itself, it's still great for control, controlling small areas uh, in the tank and it's, got, it's really cool to have as an additional fish. Blennies of almost all kinds as well as gobies have a lot of personality and that alone makes them a fish worth having. Probably the most personable fish in all of saltwater, maybe not the most, but definitely in the top 10 is the flame hawkfish. Uh, it's a fish that doesn't have a swim bladder, so it doesn't stay in constant motion in the water. It just kind of hops from place to place. But it will actually get to know you in terms of the person that feeds it. It will pay very close attention to your every movement in the room. It has a lot of personality, and that is the number one reason we sell out of these every time we get them. So check out the flame hawkfish when you come in. Okay, as you can see, one of the prettiest fish we get in, the clown trigger. This is just a stud. Uh, he's a great size. He is not the meanest trigger out there, but he's certainly not the sweetest either. A lot of color, a lot of bang for the buck. If you want a statement maker in a fish only system, clown trigger could be for you. Thanks. Yep. Thanks. So, what? Why are you looking at me? I just wonder what you're fixing to do. Oh, I don't know. We're at the end of the video now. Uh, the weekly update is almost over. Uh, do you have Already? any words of wisdom? Yeah, <laughs> no, that's good. Already? Words of wing? Words of wings? Words of wisdom? Wisdom? Um, hmm. Buy fish. This is an impromptu ending to the video. There's a lot going on. Scott's gotten a lot in this week. Uh, the girls have got a lot in this week. And we'll now go to story time with Richard. Go to the website and uh, enter to win because it's very rare that we give away a 125 gallon tank. We've never done it and I'd pay close attention to that. So have a great week. God bless and we'll see you next week.
space? About 21 years ago, I uh, went into the store in the morning and there was a huge mountain of foam all in the koi tank. It looked like somebody had poured dishwashing detergent in there. I'm freaking out trying to figure out if somebody poisoned the tanks or not. I pick up a wad of it and I smell it. And it doesn't really smell like soap at all. And then I taste it. They had spawned. <laughs>